Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing some of Sleeping Gods, which is an enormous game of exploration and adventure and story. We will be sailing the high seas, having adventures, having fights and trying to complete our quest. So this is a massive game really, the, the game can go up to 20 hours in a playthrough and you can save it, you don't have to play it all 20 hours of course, uh, and there's plenty of scope for multiple playthroughs and all of that. I am going to be playing just a bit today. We'll see how far we get, uh, but I would like, if you're keen, then uh, I very, very much enjoyed my whole campaign playthrough, uh, and I would very, very much like to carry on with this if you're up for it. We'll see though, eh? So before I get started, there is an overhead and a handheld camera. You can switch between those in the description. And there is a Klingon subtitle channel. If you pop that on, then you'll get corrected on any mistakes I might have made. And all the playthroughs that I make are only possible thanks to my patrons. It's patreon.com forward slash slickerdrips, linked in the description if you'd like to head over there. If you would like to help all of this uh, keep going and get involved with voting in the Discord and all of that. But mainly, more videos will be on the way. And that's great, isn't it? So, at the start of this game, there is a handy quick start guide that tries to teach you the game, but also is the beginning of the story. So I am going to start with that. I won't do the... there's a quick start bit and then there is like a walkthrough where it takes you through a couple of turns. I won't do that part, but I will do the starting story so we know where we all are. So you know, there are spoilers. I say a lot of the story is based on what you do and what you uncover and what you go and find in this game. There is, you know, a core reason that we're here that you can kind of find in the description of the game. Uh, so, But if you if you would like no spoilers at all, well, there, there are going to be spoilers, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, so yes, let's uh, cut to that now. So we're with Captain Sophie Odessa, April 27th, 1929. After eight years of brooding silence, I received a telegram from my father. Take an ill. Come soon. I set out with the crew on the Manticore with a stoic resolve to make it to New York. We were three days out of Hong Kong when we got caught in the worst storm I'd ever seen. When the sky finally cleared, we found ourselves in strange waters. The horizon was hazy, the only visible landmark a tall rock sticking out of the water nearby. Atop it sat a woman with a nest of grey hair, waving a ten-foot fishing pole through the muggy air. Welcome to the wandering sea, she said. You may think you're dreaming, but you are not the ones who sleep. The gods of these seas are trapped in a sleep as deep and binding as death. Their power over this world is dormant, claimed by ungrateful mortals, but they have brought you here from a distant world to help them awaken. You must do this if you wish to return home. The gods? I asked. Who else? The woman cackled. You must seek their totems hidden throughout this archipelago. With enough totems, you may wake the gods and they may send you home, a reward for your service. Many have perished trying. You will also likely die, but good luck. I asked where we might find the nearest port, but the woman vanished. We turned north as night fell. Two dazed from the journey and the alien world in which we now found ourselves, we did not notice the dark, narrow ship pursuing us until it was too late. Surprised and terrified screams erupted from the crew as bull-headed men poured onto our deck. The monster's eyes burned with a hellish flame and their language was a guttural fit of barking and braying. There was little we could do. They took the ship and we prayed for mercy with bound hands and bruised heads. Stories in the storybook. So we're going to have an encounter here. We will find loads of these as we go through the map and we'll find them in our own order. But these are some starting ones that we get. So we're given a bit of story and then a choice to make in a lot of these. You awaken on cold dirt. Most of your crew lie next to you, bound with the same crude rope that bites at your wrists and ankles. Your body aches and your clothes drip with dew. But there are no guards in sight and there are sharp rocks nearby. So we have a challenge and you are allowed to see what the options are, see what you would need to test, which uh, skill you need to test, and you're allowed to see the results that are written here. So you can't turn to the next thing that it tells you to and read what the options might be there, but we know that if we try cunning here and fail we lose three health. Well, they both have the same thing here. Different story reasons, but the same thing in this example. But later on you'll be able to use that to make your choice. So we can either choose to cut the rope bindings on the nearby rocks or wriggle free of the rope bindings. First one needs cunning five, second one needs strength five. So your abilities are all laid out on these characters. Now I'm playing a solo game here, so I have control of all nine of these characters. Mac isn't here yet for story reasons, but will be when we start the actual game, spoilers. Uh, so you can see all of the abilities that these characters have got. You basically can choose anyone to take part in a challenge. They get a fatigue for doing so. 
Your first fatigue is no problem, but the second fatigue means they're going to do less damage when it comes to combat. So if we want to do strength, that's this symbol here. And if we want to do cunning, that's the fox. So we could say the captain is involved. Now the captain is a special character in the multiplayer game because everyone has control of the captain. The, the players, the other characters are kind of divided up as evenly as possible amongst the other players, but the captain is always available for anyone to use on their turn. So we'll get the captain involved. We'll do a strength check. We'll try, we'll try and cut these rope bindings. Uh, so who else has got strength? Loads of people, but we'll use Marco because the example uses Marco. So we've got one, two strength symbols here. You can get more from other things, but for now, that's what we've got. So you get characters involved, then you draw fate. There'll be loads of times we're asked to draw fate in this game, and that is draw a card from this fate deck and add the number on the card to our skill check. So this is adding five to it. So I got two from the skills that we used, plus five gives us seven, which is more than the five we needed. We actually could have uh, got none of these symbols and just drew that card. But hey, we didn't want to risk it too much to begin with. So we don't need to look at the fail consequence. Here we go, A1. Now free, you peer outside of the wooden hut. Dark pines tower overhead. Near the edge of the brush sits a rough cage made of wooden slats. The door is fastened shut with a mechanism attached to a nearby tree. Inside, a woman lies on her back, her eyes closed. We should get her out, says Kasumi. We don't have time, says Raphael. Can I have a say? The woman in the cage opens her eyes and sits up. Her name's Mac. I'd greatly appreciate some help. You crack open the crude lock with a rock and a dirty old sock. As soon as you break her out, you hear a sudden snarl behind you. Two bullheaded monsters emerge from the woods and charge. Combat. One and two. It's now going to teach us combat. Uh, but I'll just go through it with you. So Mac is now available, story-wise. We've found Mac and we're trying to free her. So combat one and two tells us which enemies we need to fight. We have this huge deck of cards here. And I will say, for some of the decks, there is an expansion called Tides of Ruin that is mainly more content for the game. There is another map book with more places that you can go to, more encounters, more items to find, more enemies to fight. That is all added in here. I, I don't know that we'll get to that in this playthrough, but just bear in mind if you see any unfamiliar cards, uh, they might be in there. So we need combat one and two means we need cards one and two to fight. We need to shuffle them up, which of course is fantastic uh, when you're filming one-handed, uh, but that's just to get the order right for laying them out. So we are fighting a myth and god and a myth and brute. So their levels tell us the level of combat, and we have some things to think about here. Enemies can retaliate, this is how much damage they do. So the Myth and God would do three, plus any of these symbols you can see. So you would do four damage retaliating. They have an armor value. You need to beat that in a kind of skill check to be able to fight, but it's a skill check done with your weapon. So in a solo game, you get all four of these. Again, they're divided up as evenly as possible in a game with more players. Uh, and so basically, you're going to get four chances to attack before the enemies have their combat round, but they will retaliate every time they're attacked as well. Uh, and each character can only have two of these on at a time. So each character can only attack twice in one round. So you can't just give one person all of the things and just expect to attack with them every single time. But Mac is very good at hitting. So they all have a built-in weapon here. So Mac has the saber. She gets plus four to her accuracy. So we compare accuracy against the armor value of the enemy that we're attacking. So you choose first. So I think let's go for the Myth and Guard will attack. It's easier to hit. So we only need five. Basically, the, the fate you draw will be at least one. So we know that Mac is going to hit here. So we've got an accuracy value that helps to hit. This is the damage that will be done when she hits. Later on, characters will have ability cards here. She can discard ability cards with the savvy symbol on, the anchor here, to do an extra damage for each one she discards. And there's an armor value here that can protect you a bit when you get counter-attacked. We haven't got any of that yet, and don't worry about the abilities and stuff, we haven't got command tokens just yet in the quick start bit. So, for accuracy, she's fighting the guard, we need to draw fate. She hits, four plus five is definitely at more than five. So she does two damage. So I can grab the two damage here, and the damage has to be done, it doesn't have to be done in a straight line, but it has to be done kind of adjacently here. So you might want to do these two spaces, that's just two damage. This Myth and Guard's essentially got four health, four spaces here with one health each. 
But at the end of combat, the Myth and God is going to get to counterattack. So I think definitely we want to attack on this arm so he can do one fewer damage back. Now you can also do splash damage, which means you can go on to an adjacent cord as long as at least half of the damage you're doing is on the person you were actually attacking. So Mac might want to do a bit of damage to this Myth and Brute's arm as well to take down his ability to counterattack when someone attacks him. And also, this has got the synergy symbol here, this diamond. Doing damage to a synergy symbol means that Mac can pass her synergy token on to another character. And this helps them hit with their attacks. So I think let's try that with Kasumi, because Kasumi does three damage, but she's not as good at actually hitting. But with this synergy token, she gets a much better chance. Now it's not over just yet because the Myth and God was attacked and needs to counterattack. He does three plus nothing damage to Mac, which means we need to put three damage on Mac. She's got five health, Mac, so she's got two left. So she's okay for now. I think now let's go on to Kasumi. She's been given the synergy token. She can spend it to get two extra accuracy. You can't use your own synergy token, by the way. You have to have been given someone else's. And she can use her Wakizashi. Uh, so she's got four accuracy. She will attack. Let's attack the Brute. So she's got four accuracy here. She needs at least a two on the fate. And she gets four. That's fine. So she's doing three damage. And we don't really have to worry about doing this uh, this counterattack on the head here. Because three health is all the Brute has. And that's him dead. So there's a synergy token been covered up there as well. So we can take him out of the combat. Kasumi can pass her token along to someone. So Raphael here is decent at hitting. He's got three. Let's keep let's keep passing it around. We want to give some people, some different people a chance. So Raphael is going to try and attack. I've, I've still got these two left. So we've not even got into the realm of uh, the enemy's round yet. Uh, so he's got three accuracy and we'll do three damage if he hits. So three accuracy against five armor. He needs at least a two. He gets a six. Oh, I was hoping to show you some uh, failure but I am sure we will see failure soon enough. So one, two, three damage. That is a synergy token, but they don't persist for the next combat. So there is no point doing that. Uh, Raphael's synergy token gives a player two armor. So we'll be uh, protected from two damage that they get from being attacked. So we have defeated the Mythen God and Brute. So I can take them away. And we can continue. By the way, the, the quick start guide does take you through all of this and uses like prescripted fate numbers and tells you who to attack with just to kind of ease you in. So A2, you head down the path to a beach and the crew mutters relieved oaths at the sight of your ship, the Manticore, anchored nearby. When you climb aboard, you find Gloria, the ship's purser, tied up on the quarterdeck. What a lovely trip this has been, she says with a smirk. Mac thanks you for saving her and explains the gods brought her here as well. I'm from the States, Atlanta originally. You sound English like all of the characters. Uh, but I've been lost for 15 years, she says. I tried to get home, gave up for a while, then tried again. I'm willing to join you, but I lost all the totems that I found. So we're starting from scratch. I can give you some ideas about where to start looking. You nod, then let's get going. So at this point, we get to basically restore. All of our health and fatigue goes away that we gained because some of it was purposely gained in the quick start. We also get three coins, a grain, and our starting adventure cards. So we've got a recipe to make some flapjacks. We can spend some grain to relieve some fatigue and restore some health. Uh, the gear will let us redraw fate if we don't like what we got. There's Gloria. She lets us draw some ability cards. We'll see. And we can also make some soup that can heal some fatigue and get rid of low morale for a person. We also gain quests one and two. So this is going to need me to go into the mysterious magnetic box and look for, I think the quests are right at the front. Yes. So we need quests one and two. So these are, these are your starting quests basically. And quests work in a very cool way, I think, in Sleeping Gods. So we've got raids on Last Hope. Mac told us a rumor about rat creatures attacking a fishing village northeast of the Zakura Trading Post. The village may not survive the attacks much longer and needs urgent help. So there's the Zakura Trading Post. Northeast. So there, a fishing village could be up there somewhere, though could be over there. 
Uh, so this is the kind of thing you aren't told explicitly where to go. You are given, you know, these vague directions. And along the way, you will have other encounters and stuff and uh, find more and more things and have to decide what you want to focus on. It's all up to you. It also gives us a keyword. Now, often when we have encounters, it will ask us if we have particular keywords because it will affect, you know, who we meet, who's still there, what they want to say to us, what we have to offer, that kind of thing. So if uh, we're ever asked if we have the keyword raid, yes, we do. And I am well aware I'm going to need more space to fit this game in. Uh, so we've also got Anne's Cottage. Gives us the keyword cottage. Mac is on her way to search the cottage of an old treasure hunter named Anne. Perhaps something there will get us home. The cottage is near a bridge north of Zakura Trading Post. And so we can see from the map there, is that the cottage? There's a bridge. So it could be one of those. It's quite near there. The ship starts in this space on the ocean. Make sure you've got the shipboard the right way around, which I just realised I hadn't, but now it is for one or two players. Then we need to set up the event cards. There are mild, perilous and deadly events. They're all shuffled up. Again, there's more of each of these because of the expansion. And you basically want six of each. So six deadly on top of those six perilous and on top of those four, five, six mild. This is our event deck. We'll get one of these a turn. When they run out, something will happen. Each player gets a command token. That's one of these and an ability card, which is basically a fate card, but we're going to use it for different things. Now, we can help challenges by discarding fate cards from our hand, so this would help with a strength challenge. We can also pay two command tokens to equip this to a player, give them a special ability, so power strike, discard this equipped card when this crew hits for one damage. But what it also does is, once it's equipped, it gives that person an extra one of that skill, so when they participate in a challenge, Captain would have two extra strength. Or if you equipped it to someone like Raphael, whose hammer has this strength symbol, they get the benefit of the extra strength symbol and all of that stuff. But in combat, they can choose to remove this, uh, put it back in the discard pile. You have to have paid for it first. But they can put it back in the discard pile to do an extra damage. And we also need a journey log sheet. This is going to keep track of our campaign if we need to save, which we will need to. Uh, this, uh, this helps us do that. So the date, well, this is probably going to take us ages if we went through a whole thing, but uh, I'm going to say it is, oh dear, why'd you pick a pen that doesn't work? I think it doesn't like the neoprene. It is the 4th of June 2021. Right now, as I speak, I am playing normal difficulty. Brutal difficulty is basically permadeath. When you are defeated, that's just it. And then players, well, it's just, uh, it's just Tom. But I think we should have... Um, I think he's not he's just observing but i think uh, little glass marty could uh, be watching over us all and helping out what the journey log has also got on it is a map this is the out of focus there we go slowly coming into focus the wandering sea this is the map of the game uh, it doesn't tell us anything about what's here but it's got all of the encounter numbers on there so you can start as you go around places when you've done absolutely everything in a place, cross it out. If there's something you've run away from, danger here, put an exclamation mark. Uh, if we're looking for a keyword and we haven't got that quest yet, uh, then you can write that on there. It's a way of you keeping track of your journey and places you might like to visit in the future. So keep on top of that. As it is, though, it's time for a proper turn. So what do we do on a turn? First of all, a ship action, a bit of worker placement. We can go to these spaces and get all sorts of things that I'm sure we will see along the way. So the bridge will return command tokens from characters. When we use abilities of characters, they stay on there. When we use cards, they stay on there until they're cleared off by abilities like the bridge or the quarters. Each space will give us a number of ability cards and a number of command tokens. This is based on the player count. Again, in one player, we're going to get the smaller number of action tokens. I think I want the most ability tokens to start with, even though I don't need to bring anything off. I'm going to go to the quarters. And we can have damage and stuff on here later on. So I need to get myself an ability card. That's going to be no special ability on this, but it still gives the person a savvy and it only costs one command to get out there. I need three command tokens. That's going to be okay. And the ability of going to the action space, I'm wasting essentially. Next, we need to resolve the top event. So this is an abandoned canoe. The crew spots a lone canoe. Search it for perception six. We could gain a vegetable if we succeed. If we fail, we lose three health. So I can't help with any perception here. We can redraw fate, but who is good at perception? I think Audrey here 
could help out with one perception. Maybe Laurent here has got loads of different abilities. I think we'll try and get three. So Kasumi's going to join in and Laurent is going to join in as well. They're all taking fatigue to do this. So we need a three at least on here. Oh, we've got a two. That's not enough. So what I can do is spend a command token to use the gear to redraw fate. And I get a four, which is enough, which is a relief. Uh, so we, we succeed. I gain a vegetable and more importantly, don't lose three health. So there we go. The mystery vegetable goes onto the ship's stocks and we get rid of that event card. And finally, I've got two actions. I can travel, explore, market or port. Now, market or port, you have to be in a space on the Atlas with a port if you want to do the port action, a market if you want to do the market action. You can do the same action twice if you want. It's all up to you. So I could, you know, I've, I've got these two spaces to explore that I'm right next to. Or do we want to get on straight away with questing and go and look at these things that I've got quests for? I think I like the look of 174. Let's have a look at 174. I'm going to explore. So I'm in that space. That's where we start. I'm going to explore 174 with no knowledge of what's there or what I need to be there for. So I turn to 174. If keyword foam turn to this space, I don't have keyword foam. Just got raid and cottage for now. Froth clumps in the bay below cliffs like skyscrapers of jagged pewter. Slumped against their rocky walls, tangled in knots of heavy chain, is the bare form of a man. So do we climb up and free him? It's a strength six check. We lose four health if we fail. Or do we leave the man and search the nearby caves instead? Can't do this if we have the keyword pinstripe. That's a perception check. We can't leave him, can we? We're good guys. I've decided this. So we're going to need six strength, though. I think I am going to equip because of his attack, I think. I'm going to give Raphael the power strike. So that's going to cost me two command tokens because that's what was on the card. So he's going to need a fatigue. So we need strength six. I would like at least four. Because yeah, redrawing fate. Someone has that ability. So we can redraw fate once. Kasumi on her character card does have that ability. Kanan can get involved. And Gregory. So that's four. I think that's maybe even being a little bit overly cautious. So we've got four plus four. Eight is plenty. So what do we need to do? Go to 174.1. And you can be reading ahead if you want to. I'm not. Uh, you <laughs> approach the man your steps cautious. His body is slack and his eyes are like pools of blood and milk. Does he even know we're here? He hardly looks alive. Audrey tugs at the chains and they drop easily to the ground. A shout gravels from the man's throat. Free. Ah, thank you. He jumps up and dives from the cliff face into the sea, swimming effortlessly into the manticore. Once on board, he asks for some food and clothes and offers to reward you. Those chains were enchanted. I could not have freed myself. You saved me. Now I must return to my treasure if it's still waiting for me. Take me there and I'll give you a fine reward. So gain two coins, an adventure card, 12, and quests 14 and 15. Return to the ship. So that means our explore action is over. So adventure card 12 is Ubzon. So he gives us an ability, either add a cunning or redraw fate. See, already I'm trying to tuck these in and save space. They're inevitably going to have to zoom right out, aren't I? And then we've got Ubzon's treasure. We freed a man named Ubzon and he promised to lead us to a treasure hidden in a temple to the south. And then foam, we explored a bay with sheer rock cliffs. So this is essentially just giving us a keyword. Do you remember it did ask us if we had foam when we came here to begin with? So we could still, I'd like to see what is in here though as well. So I haven't even traveled yet. But you can see how it changes now. So 174, if keyword foam, turn to 174.3. So we don't even read any of that because basically the man's not there, is he? So it wouldn't make sense to read about that anymore. 174.3. Clams are plentiful on this foamy bay. So we can either gather clams, gain a meat and return to the ship or search the nearby caves. So that's what we ignored the first time. I'd like to do that. So now there isn't a man in jeopardy. I'm going to go to 174.2. In the cave opening are the remnants of a shelter. As you enter, a handsome corpse in a pinstripe suit hangs from a rock with a bony smile on his cracked jaw. A sign on a makeshift stone table in front of him reads, Take only one. As the fabulous host he must have been in life, he's left a pile of treasures for you. So you can either respect his request, 169, or take more than your share, 169.1. We're going to be good. And here is 169. Draw from the market deck until you reveal a card that costs five or fewer coins. Keep it and return the rest to the bottom of the deck. 
Gain Quest 106, Return to the Ship. So here's the market deck. For market actions, we'll be drawing from this and we can buy them. But uh, so we reveal until we find one that costs five or fewer. Here we go, grilled fish is what we found. So another recipe we can spend some food and a command token to do to, you know, basically do a little combination of these two recipes. And it only costs a meat and a veg. And we know where we can get meat right here, get some clams. And then quest 106 is Pinstripe, generous host. We met a handsome skeleton with a pile of treasures. So that again is just a keyword for reference later. It means we can't do that again, if you remember. So I've had my two actions. That's the end of the turn. It would pass to the next player and all of that. But the advantage of solo games, of course, is me again. So I have to go somewhere different on the ship action. I would like to clear off gear because you know I would like to redraw fate and have that option again. No one has really taken any fatigue or anything yet, have they? I think let's go to the deck. Now at the deck, unfortunately, you don't get an ability card. You get two command tokens. And you basically draw between one and three tokens from this search stack. So I reveal one. So I could stop right there and just take two vegetables, which I think I'm going to do. That's very nice. Uh, but a load of these have hazards on them. So you can keep drawing. You only get to choose one reward, but you must suffer all the hazards that you find. So that's pretty much the best thing, I think. We'd, we would like meat to be able to do the grilled fish. But uh, soup up here is three of anything if we need to, you know, fatigue is building up a little bit. But two vegetables, I think, will go down a treat. And then it's the event, nearly going straight onto the actions. Hidden rocks, sharp rocks hidden below a forest of seaweed threaten the ship. Dodge the rocks for savvy five or suffer a ship damage. You know what, one ship damage isn't too bad. We could try it because I, I would kind of like to get savvy onto Mac there. It helps with her attack and she's very accurate. I think I'm going to do that anyway. So that cost me one command token. But I, I, I'm just going to draw fate for this. I'm not going to commit anyone to it. Four. So committing one person to it would have uh, made us succeed. But I can show you how ship damage works. So one ship damage. We draw fate. Look at the number. It's four. So I need a ship damage cube in location four, which is the galley. If there are two damage in that location, you can't go there. And if we fill the ship up with damage, of course, it sinks. So we don't want that. Okay, time for my two action. So should we have a look at what number two is? Or go off and start doing these quests? I'll show you some traveling. So let's travel. So for a travel action, you need to do a tools check. So again, same as any of the other skills, depends how many spaces you want to move. Now I want to try and go to, let's say this cottage. I think the cottage is here. That's basically just one space away, isn't it? So again, I'm just gonna draw fate. The more, you know, the higher you score on this, the more spaces you can move with one action. So I get four, which is actually two spaces if I wanted to zip off somewhere else. So I could try and go over to that village. But I think, let's try, let's have a look at the cottage here. So, and there's three things to do in this space. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to explore for my second action, location 34. So at location 34, if keyword cottage, turn to 34.3. Yes, we have keyword cottage. It was one of our starting quests. You cross a bridge with wooden planks that dangle like loose teeth. Strength five, so this isn't an option. We need to do a strength five check. We already have, this is you know, restricting his uh, combat ability, but I think Raphael's gonna take another fatigue. So he's committing two strength for us. And yeah, it's starting to fill up, isn't it? Marco will do another one. So that's three strength, draw fate. Six, yeah, didn't even need to commit anyone. We passed that check. So beyond the bridge is Anne's cottage, nestled among the fir trees, its door swinging in the soft breeze. Inside, a woman stirs a pot of broth. A blue lizard lounges on her grey hair like a sultan on a pillow. Only briefly, she looks up and sets her gaze on Mac. You won't leave here with the map, she says, but you can have some soup. Shall we ask her why she won't give us the map? Or accept the soup while secretly looking for the map for perception eight, so that's tricky. I think let's, let's talk to her, that's a pretty tough check. So, I don't help totem seekers anymore. We're better off letting the gods sleep. Anne sips her soup, lifting the spoon to the lizard on her head and then extending it to Mac. Mac pushes the spoon away. Don't you want to see your family again? Of course, but I can't. The gods have nursed their rage for centuries and they want revenge against these islands. They won't forget their captors or show any mercy. I can't give you that map. Do we convince Anne you'll look for another way to get home if she gives you the map? So that's cunning six. If we fail, you can try again or pick something else. Do we restrain Anne and search for the map? Might lose some health because she will fight us with her soup spoon. Or, wow, do we set her house on fire and leave? 
If she won't give you the map, you want it destroyed. I think, let's try and convince her. We're decent at cunning, aren't we? And we're better at strength. No, cunning, cunning, cunning. Let's uh, let's try and convince her. Because Raphael, as, as well as trying to be nice, uh, Raphael is fully fatigued now. You can't have more than two fatigue on there, so he can't participate. So we need six cunning. I think Mac should probably get involved. See everyone filling up here already. And then Marco could go again. He's not very good at combat at all. Just one accuracy, one fight. And we don't know when fights are going to happen yet. So I've only got two there. I think I would like three. Now, Kanani's got a pistol, so ranged is better and does a lot of damage. But the captain's got a rifle. Yeah, we'll temporarily fatigue him. So we've got three cunning. I want this map. Plus two isn't enough. So that's five. But that's not too bad because Ubzon can give us a cunning here. So brilliant. So we've done it. Let's go over now. 34.5. I can't go with you, but it's possible you'll find another way. She places a shaking hand on Mac's arm and Mac clasps it. Gain a coin, a grain and an XP. Complete quest two and gain quest six. Return to the ship. So XP is tracked over here in this great big box. So we've gained one there. To complete quest two, we grab it and pop it in this used quest box. So that is not going to affect us again. And quest six tells us Anne's map. We took a map from Anne's cottage. It leads to the forest and the island to the east. Okay, so, well, one of these then. So I think that is place 34. I've written that we can get clams in uh, 174 if we really want to go back there. But in terms of exploring, we have exhausted these places, I think. So that's my two actions. So I need a new round. I think we'll do one more turn and I'm going to go off in a and show you a new page. So a new turn. I need to pick another action. It'll be nice to clear some stuff off and get more things now. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go to the quarters again. So that gets me an ability card. Cleaning gives me a tools. Instant effect gives you a low morale. Costs two to get out. I get three command tokens and we remove two command tokens from cards and people. So that is all of them. They're available to use again. And do you know what? You, you can have three at once. I'm going to use Gloria straight away. You can do all of this stuff anytime, you know, and other people can do it on their turns to help you. Draw two ability cards. So we've got a bit of choice here as to what we can get out. So alert, I could give someone a cunning. I really want to lift fatigue and stuff as well. We've got loads amongst us all. So next up is an event, Zokmir Traders. We can, a ship with a green patched sail approaches. We can trade, trade up to two food for any type or raid their ship to get a grain and a low morale or bid farewell. You know what, I would like to turn a grain and a vegetable into two meat because that's actually helped me out because I was worried about my character starting to get a bit fatigued. It's gonna be all the fate tokens. Yeah, we're gonna go four. I'm gonna equip Audrey with cleaning so she can get that extra tool, but she gets a low morale for doing this. Low morale means if she commits to challenges, she has to pay a command to commit to them. But we're gonna do some, uh, so that cost me two of my three things. They're all going, but grilled fish is just a carrot and a meat, and that lets me get rid of a low morale, and then we can heal three health, which we don't have uh, any damage, but it's more about the fatigue I want to take off people. So I definitely want to heal it off Raphael. I think all of the people that are fully exhausted, Raphael, Marco, and Canaan there. Yeah, now everyone is available to do something. And I think I want to move with my first action. I'm not going to commit anyone again. I'm just going for it. Five is brilliant, just what I wanted. Two movement. So it's a movement to go across the sea. It's a strength check will take a ship damage. There's a hazard in this space. I'm going to come this way because I want to go off the page and show you that. So we need to do a strength check. I'm not going to commit anyone again. Five, we fail, which means we take a ship damage in space three, which means the sick bay gets damaged. But then my second movement, I'm going to go up. And this page here tells us if you go up from here, you land in page 17. And look where we end up. Now, I know I've got loads of stuff on that page still, but basically I, I have never been up here. So I've got no clue. Not that I really remember anything that happened down there, uh, but 
yeah, my encounter action is going to be 84, and let's just see what's cracking. So, encounter 84. Shards of mirrored glass hang from every tree along the shoreline, reflecting back bits of sky and land and sea in a dazzling array as they slowly twist in the wind. The effect is disorienting. There are bad rumours about this place, says Mac. I'm telling you now, I won't go in there without a compelling reason. A group of traders has made camp nearby, but they're keeping a wide distance between themselves and the trees. So the trees are hung with mirrored glass. Mac says there are bad rumours about this place. A group of trader camps nearby. So we can only enter the mirrored forest if we've basically got a quest, some reason to be here, so Mac will go in there. We do not have the keyword mirrors. Uh, so we can just return to the ship, but surely we want to try and make a deal with the traders first so it's not a completely wasted journey. So first up, I'm just going to come to space 84 here and try and write on mirrors. You can download, I saw just uh, before I started, you can download someone's made some kind of big vector maps. I might download them because it would be nice to have loads of space to write. So at the traders, they are uninterested in coin, but they're willing to barter. You may trade any food for a food of a different type if you do gain a coin. Okay, then I'll trade a grain for a meat and then gain a coin. Basically just wanted the coin, not particularly fussed about the trade. Uh, return to the ship. So... Yeah, we didn't get anything done particularly there, but we've got some information. As soon as we find out about these mirrors, and look at these stones over here, what's going on there? Right, so that's my turn, isn't it? Uh, we need a ship action again. So people are getting fatigued. You can come to the galley and try and remove some fatigue from people. Or we could we could go to... We could maybe try and go to Lynn's Grove. Let's go to the galley. First of all, so I get an ability card, Iron Will. Discard this to give someone three shield. And I can give up an ability card to get rid of a fatigue from someone. I think let's get rid of... We can skip an event card once this is equipped. I think I think World Wisdom. We're going to get rid of that. That could be fantastic later on, though. No, we're not going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of Alert, I think. And so I get just two ability cards. It's so tempting to just equip that straight to Raphael. Uh, who do we want to... Yeah, I'm going to take that off there. And I'm going to spend my two commands straight away, and I'm going to equip that to Raphael. So when we need a strength check now, just putting one fatigue on him can give us three strength. Then the event... Loose supplies. Crates float on the sea after a trade ship meets an untimely end. Watch for the supplies. Perception 6. That's kind of difficult. We haven't got any perception cards helping us out there. We could get some grain floating about on the sea to try and get. I'll commit 2. We'll commit Audrey and Laurent. Yeah, and just cross our fingers. I drew 3. So close. Don't have any command token even if I did have something to help. So we fail, we gain a low morale. I think Audrey will gain that low morale back. Otherwise, we could have put grain on two regions on this map, and when we go over them, we get that grain. Would have been nice. I'm going to travel for my first action. I'm not committing anyone. I'm just getting four. So I can move two spaces. I'm just going to go over to Lynn's Grove, though. So I can have encounters here, or I can also port. So I'll show you what port does. With a port action, you can do as many of these as you like. So for four coins, you can go to the inn, Everyone loses a fatigue and heals two health. The shipyard, you can repair a ship damage per materials or coin that you spend. The healer, you can pay a coin to restore all health, and you can spend XP to buy level cards. They are too expensive right now. There are loads of level cards for each player, tells you the amount of XP you need in the corner, but can do amazing things. The captain can have up to three fatigue tokens is my favorite one. Uh, so I think we're definitely going to pay four coins, one, two, three, four, and that's going to remove fatigue from everyone. They haven't got any damage right now, but I think that's worth it. I don't have any materials, but I could pay that last coin. I don't want the galley to take a damage. Yeah, I'll, I'll heal the galley's damage. That's pretty much all we can do here. So it's another turn, new action. I will... Let's go back to the quarters. I really like the quarters. Get an ability card. Maintain instant effect repair a ship damage. Let's get that on Audrey. Have loads of tools then. Be whipping about the place. Uh, I get three of these. Oh, but I did want her to have world wisdom, didn't I? But we want to skip event cards when they're the horrible ones, when they're the, the, the bottom, the, the harshest category. Okay, I'm going to give her maintain. Look at all the tools she's got, and they can be used with her wrench. Two command to do that. Heal, heal a ship damage for putting maintain on. 
And so I've still got one spare if I want to use it on something. Uh, and we go to our event. Merchant vessel, a well-provisioned ship approaches. Do we convince them that we need help? Cunning six? Or buy food? I don't have any money. Or bid farewell? Hmm, I kind of think bid farewell. I don't think it's worth cunning six. Yeah, we haven't got any cunning cards on anything. We have got this, haven't we? But uh, we take two health damage if we lose. No, I'm just going to bid farewell. But now, let's, uh, let's have some encounters in Lynn's Grove. I'm going to go for... 120. Lynn's Grove. The banks are piled high with massive pine logs waiting to be loaded onto ships. A group of low wooden buildings clings to the shore, all built from the same pine wood. The forest looms almost threateningly just beyond the buildings. Muscular men and women bustle around on various errands. Almost every one of them carries an axe. Do we explore the woods, visit the local museum, can't afford to purchase materials, or leave? Uh, I think let's visit the local museum. I'm going to go to 120.2. So, the museum tour guide, an old man with copper skin and a cheerful disposition, introduces himself as Garlan. This region has a rich history, he tells you, as he guides you through a small museum. Once the gods lived here before they went to sleep. After that, the Pan Empire had a stronghold here until their civilization was destroyed too. Lynn's Grove is a fairly recent settlement. I already had wrinkles by the time it was built. The man glances both ways and gestures for you to come closer. Everything here is new, not even the trees themselves are as ancient as they appear. If you want to know more, you should sail by the Pillar of Kenta and see what you see. Gol and the Museum Guide tells you the trees here aren't as old as they seem. You can learn more at the Pillar of Kenta. So we can purchase something from the gift shop. I would love to, but I've got no money. Show Gol and the inscription requires keyword sapling or return to town. We're going to have to return to town. So I think in that case, we'll go for the other option, explore the woods. So we haven't been told to return to the ship yet. The forest is denser than you'd expect it to be, given the massive logging operations going on. The people of Lynn's Grove, with all their axes, have barely made a dent in the trees. It's a tough hike, and you eventually stop to take a break. While you're resting, you hear Gregory call out. It looks like someone's missing their property, he says. He's discovered a wooden trunk. A small card written in a language you don't understand is attached to the handle with a string. Let me see, says Mac. It says, if found, please return to S. Zassi, small rocky island near Lynn's Grove. That looks like a small rocky island. Well, it looks like quite a big rocky island, actually. But it's near Lynn's Grove, isn't it? So we'll say that. So you find a wooden trunk with instructions to return it to its owner on a small rocky island near Lynn's Grove. Game quest 65. And you might guess what this says on here, but we can remember it now. We've got the quest trunk. And then that takes us back to 120 again. And I think we're going to have to leave. So it told us, didn't it? Keyword sapling. So I'm just going to at least try and write in keyword sapling there so we can go back if we've got that and then that's only one action i think we're in the space we're actually at 165 as well but let's have a look at 201 see what's going on there so 201 if keyword reminisce no i don't have that but i will just write it in my map i think someone i know lives around here says mac she leads you to a small cottage outside of lynn's grove rushing ahead she knocks loudly on the door Carolina, you salty dog, are you in there or not? Open up. A woman opens the door. She's tall and muscular with short hair and a gold earring. Mara Johnson, as I live and breathe, you'd better come in. Mac insists you stop by the cottage of an old friend. Go inside with Mac, or wait outside and raid the cottage garden. I think, let's, let's have a look inside. This is Carolina, we travelled together for a while, explains Mac as you enter the cottage. The rooms are sparse with minimal furniture. The walls are empty of any decoration. I'm moving soon, so most everything's packed. But come and sit down. Carolina leads you to the kitchen, where you all sit around a long wooden table. I can see it's been a few years, she says, nodding at the grey in Mac's hair. Mac laughs. And how long since you gave up piracy and settled down? Carolina turns to the crew. She loves to bring that up, but I was only a pirate for a few months. Turns out I make a much better lumberjack. Mac and Carolina exchange old stories, but soon the whole crew joins in lively conversation. When you finally get up to leave, Carolina asks a favour. It would be a great help to me if you'd take some old supplies off my hand, give me less to carry. Consider it a thank you for letting me catch up with an old friend. Mac and Carolina reminisce about old times while the crew shares a warm meal. Gain two grain, a materials, and two vegetables. Remove all low morale. So Audrey appreciates that. We've all had a good time there. And uh, gain quest 51, which is reminisce. We visited the house of a woman Mac used to travel with. So I imagine we just get a different choice if we come back here. Okay, and so that is the two actions here. So a fresh turn, 
I I'm not so bothered about getting let's let's go to the deck again. So no new ability card. I get two command tokens. And let's have a look. So two grain or two materials. I'm happy with that. I think I'm gonna go for two grain. So another good one, which is some good luck, but it you know, you don't shuffle it till you've gone through them all. So the bad ones are waiting. So then it's event, isn't it? Lost Sailor. You rescue a Lucran Sailor who is floating on a piece of driftwood. Ongoing, keep this card next to the shipboard. Discard this card when you visit a port. While you have the card, once per turn, you may redraw fate. That's nice. So two actions. I would like to go over to that island, but I kind of feel like, you know, 165 and 149 are already here in the space we're in. I think maybe let's have a look at those this turn, and then next turn I'll go over to the rocks and have a look. So 165 first. The pines and underbrush grow so thick here that you're uncertain of your ability to navigate through it. Even if you could find something useful in the deep forest, you doubt you could find your way back out again. You order your crew to stay close. Cut down a small tree on the edge of the forest for craft 5. Fail gain a low morale. We can search for the seeds yourself. We need keyword growth, which let me have a look. No, we don't have that. And then find a local guide to help you search for the seed. So there's some kind of seed in, involved in something. Uh, we don't have growth, so we shall we cut down a small tree on the edge of the forest? Craft five. So straight away, this is Audrey's second fatigue, but that's three. I feel like that's a good start. I'm just going to draw fate after that. So three, six, that's enough. So turn to 165.3. You take your felled tree and leave, but just for a moment you hesitate, uncertain you want to turn your back on the forest. The only thing more unsettling than looking into the depths of the crowded trees is looking away from them. So we definitely want to come back here, don't we? With the keyword growth. But we got two materials for our trouble, which isn't too bad. Uh, and then the other one that is here is 149. Oh, loads of keywords at 149. If keyword heretic, no. Gomka, no. Wandered, no. From the deck of the ship, you can see a group of five silver-haired pan wanderers standing on the beach. They watch the manticore approach as if they're waiting for you. The robes they wear show they're pilgrims from a religious order, Mac tells you. You can usually tell which order by the design of the robes, but I'm not familiar with this one. The leader of the pilgrims, an older man with bioluminescence shining through the crow's feet wrinkles that mark the edges of his purple eyes, nods to you as you land. Well met, outsiders, he says. My name is Zoe. Perhaps you can help us. Ever since the Pan Empire was destroyed by the gods, we have wandered the seas, guiding the people of this world to greater piety, so they may avoid a similar fate. We recently discovered that a certain scholar is in possession of the blasphemous book, Gomka. The other pilgrims spit on the ground at hearing the name. We asked her to give it to us so we could destroy it, continues Zoe, but she refused. Now she won't let us back into her cabin. Please, you must get this book for us. Through persuasion or theft or trickery, the method is up to you, but the book must be disposed of using the proper rituals. It's for the scholar's own good. So do we promise to help or try to learn more? I'm not so great at the perception, but we do get to redraw fate, don't we? So let's try to learn some more. Uh, Kasumi could get involved for one perception, and then I think Mac. So we've got two there. Two plus five, didn't even need to commit anyone. You try to make sense of the pattern of looping lines on the pilgrim's robes, but the more you look at them, the more confused you become. Zoe bows. Please consider our request. If you return with the book, we will reward you with secret knowledge that may help you on your journey. Okay, well that didn't really get me anything. But uh, game quest 52, return to the ship. Which is blasphemous literature. A group of pan wanderers has asked us to steal a copy of a book called Gomka from a reclusive scholar who lives nearby. So that's my two actions. And okay, let's go over to the Rocky Island. I'm going to need a good travel action. There's nothing on cards or anything. There's nothing I particularly want to do about these things. Maybe we want to... Yeah, let's let's get fatigue off Audrey. So sharp eye there gives you an extra accuracy and a perception. And the captain uses perception. <gasps> I want to keep that. Yeah, so go to the galley, get two command tokens, and then we can give up a card. I'll give up... Oh, I don't want to give up world wisdom though, do I? Okay, we're not going to do the get rid of fatigue action. We're going to equip Sharp Eye to the captain because the captain's rifle does four damage, but she's got terrible accuracy. So that will help her a bit. And for perception checks, it'll be brilliant, wouldn't it? So yes, that's that. We need an event. I should stop spending things till I've seen the event. Tornado, a twister rips through the sea ahead. Avoid the twister for strength seven 
or take two ship damage. So, strength seven. We're brilliant at strength. So, Raphael, there's three committed straight away. And who else can help us? Marco, that's four. And I think we could get seven. Five. Well, that's not good. But we've got that event, haven't we? That once per turn we can redraw. There's five. Brilliant. So that's that's like nine, isn't it? Uh, you must move the ship one distance. Well, that's no problem, actually, because I wanted to go over to here. So I think we're going to go up there. Oh, actually, these spaces have got... So that's a strength check or take a ship damage. Or a savvy check or take a, a ship damage. We're more likely to do that, aren't we? So I'm just going to draw fate for it. Five. That's okay. That's what we needed. So my first action is going to be travel. I'm not going to commit anyone to it because I just want to move one space and I could do that with zero. Uh, so two. That's fine. Move up. And then my explore action is going to be one, two, seven. And I'm hoping this is the right place. There's a child, shouts Canaan. A lone child on that rocky island. Look. You hurry to the starboard railing, eyeglass in hand, and sure enough, you can see a small humanoid figure on the rocky shore. The rest of the island appears barren, but something isn't right. The child flickers in the wind. He must be in trouble, poor boy. We have to stop and offer our help. So do we land on the island or keep sailing? I think we've got to land on the island, haven't we? He looks just like my youngest son, says Canaan, running ahead of the group and kneeling down in front of the figure. Hello, my name is Canaan. What is your name? Where are you from? Are you lost? To you, the figure looks nothing like a child. It's just a shadow, a wisp of flickering smoke in a vaguely human shape. There's a strange scratching whisper on the edge of your hearing. Canaan listens to the figure with rapt attention. Uh, he claims the figure looks like his son, but you only see a shadowy apparition. Do we drag him away? Or... Wait and see what happens. So, what is... What's the check? Strength 9. Fail. Turn to 1 to 7.2. He can't participate. Strength 9. Uh, hopefully something too bad won't happen. We're going to wait and see what happens. So what? what's that? Uh, 127.5. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that fits. Uh, Canaan talks to the apparition in a gentle voice. Port Haven? I'm not entirely sure we know where that is, but we can always find it. Of course we'll give you a ride if that's what you need. The shadow disappears, but for some reason, Canaan doesn't seem distressed about it. We can go now, Captain, he says. As you board the ship, you could swear you see the flicker of a shadow on the deck just out of the corner of your eye. But when you turn to look, it's gone. So, Canaan offers the shadow a ride to Port Haven and it may have followed you onto the Manticore. Gain quest 88, return to ship. Right, so that's two things. So, I don't need to clear things off again. Should we just go to the deck? Two command tokens. And let's search. So, just have a look at a token. So we get a low morale and a coin. Hmm. It's something, isn't it? Sorry, Laurent, you have got low morale. Uh, but we get a coin. And then event. I am going to find some Zokmir refugees. An overcrowded boat floats low in the water. As you sail near, the refugees throw grappling hooks onto your ship. Do we help repair their ship for Craft 8? Or cast off the hooks and escape? I think we, we can help repair their ship. Craft 8 is going to be tricky. We need to make some food first. We've got a lot of uh, meat and veg. So we can do this. Get rid of a low morale. And get rid of three fatigue. I think two off her because she's so good at tools. And we'll get rid of one off Raphael because strength seems to come up a lot. And then no one's taken any health damage. It's just that this is only cost two food things. So we need craft eight. So I think Audrey will get a... <laughs> the fatigue straight back. That's three. The captain could contribute one. So that's four. Then who else has got it? Raphael and uh, Laurent. Yeah, he, he will help. So what's that? That's five. Surely we can do... No, he's not going to contribute. We're going to do four because we can redraw, can't we? Six. Didn't need to commit anyone. Uh, so fail. Seven health that would have been. Uh, but we can gain an artifact, which is essentially two coins. So now what I'm going to do is... So that's the only rocky island I could see to the east. So maybe we need to travel with my first action. I... I'm not going to commit Audrey again. Let's try and get a good number. Five, that's good, that's two spaces. One space is going to be to the east, to page 22. But you may notice that this book only goes up to page 19. That's it. That's because 
There's a load of spaces to the south, but also this one space to the northeast here. That is in the expansion, uh, Tides of Ruin. So you can come in, I will come in in this lower space. You decide where you come in when you're uh, changing the pages. We've got a scholar's camp up there, but this is a small rocky island. Maybe this is where he is. So we're going to have an encounter here and hope that we uh, find the guy with his missing trunk. So we need the Tides of Ruin book. Here it is. Here's some uh, new stuff. It tells you all about an arcade mode that also comes with the expansion. But we want R11. So if this is your first time here, oh dear. So maybe he's not here either. If this is your first time here, go to R51.1. And I'll tell you that I uh, we, we never went to any of the expansion locations. We never went up here anyway, so uh, all of this has been new anyway. But I've never even looked in here, apart from when I was trying to find instructions, which there isn't any. Lauren runs up to you. Captain, I was running some fishing nets off the side of the ship, and look what I caught. He hands you a large bottle. The glass is clouded and deformed. But through it, you can see an intricately constructed sailboat. And on the deck of that sailboat is a rolled up piece of paper. There are also a couple of coins rolling around in the bottom of the bottle. Do we try and open it or throw it back? Well, surely try and open it. So strength six. So I think it's just going to be Raphael gives us three. And then we'll redraw if things go badly. Five. Barely needed it. Uh, so yes, we succeed at that. Uh, we didn't... Uh, the, the risk was lose two health and gain a low morale. It's embarrassingly difficult to pry the cork out of the bottle. Uh, so with, is it, yeah, number two. With Lawrence's help, you pull the cork out of the bottle and retrieve the paper. It's a small note that reads, if found, please return to the acolytes of Yuval. You flip it over and on the back it reads, whatever you do, do not give this to the false acolytes of Ival. Laurent fishes up a ship in a bottle which contains a note instructing you to return it to the true acolytes of Ival. Gain two coins and quest 193. There you go, note in a ship in a bottle. Okay, well, that's interesting, isn't it? There's nothing else on here. Oh, I needed to do a cunning check. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? I'll, I'll give someone a low morale and assume I failed that check. Uh, sorry, Marco. So I think... The, the mystery island for the trunk still remains. There is no good place, unless I'm going to go on for 20 hours, there is no good place to stop this because I am very, very keen to just keep going. But I will. Uh, that When this comes out, which will be a little bit after I filmed it, uh, but once this is live, I think the week after, I will schedule a live playthrough. I do live videos as well. Uh, and we will continue the story of Sleeping Gods if you would like to join me there, and we will find out uh, who the true prophets of Ifhal will stop this village getting attacked, we'll find the blasphemous literature, we'll do all of it, won't we? We'll hopefully find some totems, but I think we have found plenty in uh, these few short turns. Thank you very much for joining me. If you would like to know what I think of Sleeping Gods after playing a whole campaign of it and this bit, then that will be linked on the screen shortly or in the description now. Again, if you'd like to help me keep making these playthroughs and make more of them and do it more and all of that good stuff, uh, it's patreon.com forward slash slickerdrips linked in the description too. Thank you very much for watching though and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone. <laughs>